It's time to talk receivers, wide receivers, including tight ends. We're doing pass catcher tiers for every NFL team. Our tiers one through five. Are you elite? Are you average? Above average? Below average? Ranking every receiving group in the NFL on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're breaking down wide receivers today. Make sure, by the way, that you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Helps us out tremendously. Um, wide receivers. And we're going to include tight ends in this pass catching yeah. group. We're not including running backs, though, because we already did running backs. We don't want to double count the running backs, but we wanted to add tight ends into the pass catching groups here. So when we say receiver, as Netflix did with receiver, including a tight yeah, end in the receivers right. program, we are going to include tight ends here uh, as we go through the tiered rankings of every team's receivers in the NFL. Again, you don't want to double count McCaffrey and a lot of these tight ends are all pseudo receivers anyways. And frankly, I didn't think a tight end only show would be a huge seller either. And, you know, the Niners are already tier one, so it wouldn't matter if McCaffrey was included or not, right? Let's be honest. You're right on. about that. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Uh, <laughs> as we have been doing, we'll go east to west here and start with the Buffalo Bills. And- oh, real quick, BP. Uh, we talked about this with running backs too. If you happen to have a terrible quarterback but awesome receivers – I'm going to put you in tier one or vice versa. You know, right. you, yeah. it doesn't matter what your passing here, game so. is. You yeah. might have an awful exactly. coach, an awful scheme, an awful quarterback, but we're looking at the receivers here. And so that's just after, player, actually a yeah. higher level of difficulty. Uh, we're looking at you, Washington commanders, right? Over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, how about the Buffalo bills though? They do have a star quarterback and they had a, a really solid running back room as well. Uh, no longer though, Stefan Diggs in house replaced by, uh, second round selection, Keon Coleman out of Florida State, Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, the top three wide receivers there. You got Marquez Valdez Scantling uh, in house as well now. Matt Collins, Chase Claypool, you're familiar with his game, Matt, and Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox at tight end. So it's a deep group, but they don't have that true number one wide receiver, maybe. What do you think about this pass catching group? Group four. I mean, there's a lot of really good pass catching groups out there and there's talent here but i need to see it especially at receiver kincaid holds the most weight in their favor and dawson knox is a really good player too like yeah. I, I i might because of the tight end sneak this one into tier three but i can see why you would say tier four based on the unknowns at wide receiver but uh, i do want to point to Joe Marino, and he was on with Ross and filling in for oh, us yeah, on this yeah. channel to end last week. And, and shout out to Joe, and he's the host of Locked On Bills. He said something interesting. And the way a lot of people, including me, and, and I think you, the way we've talked about it, look at the Buffalo Bills wide receiver group as a transitional year. Joe said something very interesting. He said the transition already happened last year. And well, he broke it down this way. and He said Khalil Shakir produced more than Stefan Diggs already last year on 60% of the opportunities, that transition has already happened. And all it did was make me pretty excited about stealing Khalil Shakir in my fantasy football leagues, man. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Um, awful, obvious potential to jump from four to three. Like I might watch two Bills games and be like, Keon Coleman's pretty good. I'm putting him in tier three. But I'm going to be conservative and put him in tier four because of youth. Yeah, I also think they're all best out of the slot. Shakir Coleman and Samuel. Yeah, yeah that's a little Coleman, crowded too, you know. Coleman should be a big slot and they're going to use him outside. I don't know if that's the best mm-hmm. best for his game. So we'll see how no, that probably. turns out for uh for the Buffalo Bills wide receiving group. Miami Dolphins. This is a tier 1, Matt. Uh, I already know cuz oh, yeah. they got Tyreek Hill, they got Jalen Waddle, then they added Odell Beckham to the mix. Doesn't really matter who's that tight end, but Johnu Smith is there now. Uh where are you putting the wide receivers, pass catchers, Miami Dolphins? Easy tier one. They would have been tier one last year, 
But now you add Odell, Johnu, and Malik Washington, who I think they stole late in the draft too. Yeah, sixth round. Now they're even better. Them. Yeah, yeah. I believe he was there for them in the sixth round. Unbelievable. Yep. New England Patriots, uh, they added a couple of draft picks. Jalen Polk in round two, Javon Baker in round four to go with Kendrick Bourne, Demario Douglas. You got K.J. Osborne and Jalen Rager there as well. Tyquan Thornton, we'll see if he can uh, have a big year three for them. He's looking rocked up and looks like he's at least put some uh, some work in in the weight room. You got Hunter Henry still at tight end with Austin Hooper, so some vets there with rookie Jaheim Bell at tight end. Uh, a lot of names there. A lot of names. None of them really scare defensive coordinators, though. They're going to be Tier 5. Um, I know he was drafted earlier than Puka Nakua, but if someone's going to have that kind of season that's not Marvin Harrison Jr., I think it might be Polk. I mean, no one's going to have the Puka year, but I mean, I can, say, I can see Polk being very good this year. Yeah, the Stars had to align for that. And so, you know, the offense and the quarterback situation, and, and we'll see, but I could see Polk being that sneaky player. And, and I think Javon Baker has sort of a unique like style of, in a fit, and fits in the offense in a way that the other guys don't, and that might benefit him as well. So I, I, I do have some hope for the rookie class there of wide receivers for the for the uh, for the Patriots, but it, it might be a little while too. Like next year, if they grab the next year's neighbors, Adunze, Harrison, or sign T. Higgins, I'll be like, boom, you're a tier two. You've you, you just don't have that go to guy yet. And the big one is if they've got the right coaching staff in place and if Drake May actually is good, then mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York Jets. Garrett Wilson, who I think is a superstar. Mm, you got yeah. Mike Williams now, uh, the big X receiver, to go with Garrett Wilson, Xavier Gibson, Malachi Corley, a rookie third rounder, Alan Lazard, Jason Brownlee catching passes from Aaron Rodgers, and then Tyler Conklin at tight end. I'm going to go tier two because I think Wilson – is a true budding superstar. You know, like I think he might get in that tier one CD lamb, J Jamar chase neighborhood this year. And I have some questions about Conklin and Williams, but it's a lot better than what they had that Corley and Williams are there now, at least staying out East, but going to the NFC side of things and yeah. the Dallas Cowboys who still haven't figured out the contract situation. As of this recording with CD lamb, uh, we are recording this, a couple days early. So you know, who knows if some big contract or some big trade, by the way, trade requests are happening too. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, all that aside, we're dealing with who's on those rosters right now. CD Lamb uh, yet to be signed by the Dallas Cowboys. Brandon Cooks, Jalen Tolbert there. And then you've got Jake Ferguson and Luke Schoonmaker at tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to tier two. Um, I think uh, Cooks is declining a little. Lamb obviously carries the ball for this. I mean, he has a ton of value. I'm a little rough on Ferguson. I don't think he's a special player. I think he benefits from volume. So good group, not great, not not elite. We did the quarterbacks. We did the running backs. Uh, I'm a little bit worried how how much this team needs Dak and and Lamb. Right. And either one of those things goes wrong, they're in big trouble. Big trouble. And Parsons is also out there, too, in terms of contract stuff. Like, they're in a weird spot. Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys are in a really weird spot. The New York Giants are in a, a weird spot, too, because I, I think they slow played a rebuild that should have started a couple years ago. Uh, but Daniel Jones still throwing passes there to Malik Neighbors now, the first-round pick. Uh, will How quick will he hit the ground running and catching in the NFL, as it were? Uh, we got Darius Slayton, Wandale Robinson, Isaiah Hodgins, Jalen Hyatt, the third-round speedster from last year, Isaiah McKenzie, Allen Robinson uh, is still going. He's with the New York Giants now. And tight end Daniel Bellinger to go with rookie fourth-rounder Theo Johnson. Torn between three and four here. I mean, you would think they're going to be a, a bottom-of-the-roster or bottom-of-the-league group. I think they're better than that. And a lot of it's because I like Slayton and Wandell and Hyatt. I thought all those guys played pretty well last year. And frankly, I think Neighbors is going to be a star. But I'm going tier four because tight end's really rough. I kind of like Theo Johnson. Potentially yeah, I mean, there. he's a chance. But, yeah. And, and with rookie wide receivers, the, the hit rate is weird. So, like, it's, let's, it's let's not slam dunk. Yeah. yeah. Not ready to crown Malik Neighbors. But to be honest with you, I think the offense and, and Daniel Jones is not a great quarterback. So, some of the guys might be a lot better than, than we're giving them credit for, like you mentioned with Slayton and Robinson and, you know, Jalen yeah. Hyatt potentially. So, we'll see. Uh, you know, quarterback play is so big for the, for the Giants. And that's why I'm a little worried about this football team. Like on the Steelers show I do, we're always talking about what receivers can Steelers get. I'm like, 
Darius Slayton, I, I wouldn't mind throwing on a team that's respectable. You know, you get him for cheap, you know? Yeah, yeah. B- play a nice depth role for you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a two or a three or something, you know, on a, another team. All right, we got Eagles, Washington as well in the NFC East. Continuing on with the North, South, and West, we are tiering every wide receiver group, including tight ends, in the NFL on today's Peacock and Williams. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. It's super easy. You see the green check mark, you know that guaranteed fit will fit your vehicle and get it in no time and save a whole lot of cash with your car. So with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP. Just bring home that W with eBay Motors. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBayMotors.com, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. When you're hiring your small business, you want to find the quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs isn't just some job board either. LinkedIn helps you find professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, which is key, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit any other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours on LinkedIn jobs. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Philadelphia Eagles receivers, and uh, they've got some good ones. They've got good ones at wide receiver. They got good ones at tight end. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Paris Campbell, big old Johnny Wilson, the sixth round rookie, uh, the fifth round rookie, uh, Aeneas Smith as well at wide receiver. And then you got Dallas Goddard at tight end. I actually have some hope for Smith and Wilson, the two draft picks, but the top three alone, Goddard and the top receivers, tier one, forget about it. You know, yep. tier one group. Uh, this is a, a pretty good group of pass catchers that hasn't had the opportunity to shine in recent years. And Terry McLaurin has just been rock solid. But is there more there for Terry McLaurin in his career as good as he's been? Kind of like feels DJ Moore-ish a little bit yeah. with Terry McLaurin, the way things have gone for his career. Um, Jahan Dotson it hasn't quite broken out as they expected when they drafted him in the first round. They they uh, drafted rookie Luke McCaffrey in the third round. You got Diami Brown as well, and then tight end Zach Ertz to go with rookie second rounder Ben Sinnott at tight end. Yeah, I have some hope for McCaffrey and Sinnott. I don't have much hope anymore for Ertz. Um, Dotson appeared to take a step back last year, but a lot of it was just bad quarterback play and no protection, and I think McLaurin's a star. So I'm going tier three there. I think that's an average group. Yeah, I'll buy that. I think tier three is a good place for that with a, with a chance to move. I'd be, I would, I would put, I, I like him in tier three and I would say there's a better chance that they're a tier two than a tier four. I agree. McLaurin's not going to fall off a cliff anytime soon. I think he's a really good player. Baltimore Ravens year two for Zay Flowers at wide receiver. They re-upped Rashad Bateman. I thought Bateman might've been a candidate to be a, on another roster, but apparently they still like him. And so still some opportunities there for Rashad Bateman, uh, Nelson Aguilar in Baltimore. Now you got Tylen Wallace, you got Devontae Walker, the rookie fourth rounder, Deontay Harry, and then Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely really good tight end group. Torn here between two and three. I mean, that tight end group might be the best. It's probably the best tight end room in the league. Flowers was very impressive, but I don't know that he profiles to be a one. So I'm going to keep them a tier three. Bateman could easily put them into tier two if he just plays like a number two receiver. And he looked like he could be that as a he, rookie. Yeah, man. I know. He got hurt. So that's why I was like, man, he'd be a nice reclamation project on another team. But they didn't want to let him get away, which tells me they still believe in him as well. I, yeah, agreed. And his contract was kind of weird. It was like, we're not going to quite give you the fifth round or fifth year option. You're not worth that, but we don't want you just to leave. So, 
kind of split the difference. I'm like, yeah, all right. T. Higgins looks like he's going to play on his franchise tender and uh, hit free agency next year for the Cincinnati Bengals to go with Jamar Chase. You got Mike Gusecki at tight end now. Uh, 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 Jermaine Burton is an interesting one as well. Third round rookie there for the for the Cincinnati Bengals. What tier is the Bengals pass catchers? One. And I think Burton can be better than Boyd. Different, but better. And he's certainly more talented. Top two receivers rival Philly or you know Miami as a top two. Cleveland Browns, Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Jerry Judy, they traded for and then paid. David Joku is uh, a tight end that is another player that sort of, you know, started fast and then slow and then came back. And I, I was kind of surprised, thought he needed a new environment, but they they stuck with him in Cleveland and then he made good. Um, kind of feels middle of the road-ish. It's mm-hmm. hard for me to really wrap my brain around where this group should be as far as tiers go I, i'm gonna call them average i'm gonna call them yeah. three i do think Najoku's turned the corner if, you know it takes tight ends a while um cooper's a legit one but not a star i don't love the judy move and what's odd to me is if you look at the browns they draft receivers every year and their top three guys were drafted by the jets broncos and raiders you know they, they, they <laughs> traded true. these guys i didn't know? mention last year's third rounder cedric tillman who's got an opportunity to but but didn't clearly they, if what they did with jerry judy and already elijah moore is sort of a slot guy that doesn't leave a lot of opportunities for cedric tillman so that's telling me that they didn't love what they saw from him either yeah. wasn't impressive so yeah. a little bit of a question i would if we're just ranking them straight out, the other tier three teams we have so far, Washington and Baltimore, I like both of those better than Cleveland. Yes. And it's kind of the opposite. I think that this is the right tier for them, but it's kind of the opposite of Washington where I said, you know, I would likely bet that they would elevate to tier two for Cleveland. I feel like they could go the other way to tier four. They could, especially if, if Cooper looks a little older, that's a problem. Your Pittsburgh Steelers, they lost Deontay Johnson in the offseason, but are hoping for more from third-year receiver George Pickens. Uh, to go with Pickens at wide receiver, you got Van Jefferson, rookie third-rounder Roman Wilson. You got the speedster return man in Calvin Austin. And then at tight end, really good one-two, and eh, maybe one-two-three if you count Connor Hayward as well, Pat mm-hmm. Fryermuth, and Darnell Washington in tight end. Going tier four, I hope I'm not too much of a homer keeping him out of tier five, but I do think Pickens is a legit dude. And I think Fryer Muth was vastly underused under the last offensive coordinator, and they'll be the top two options. And then all the other receivers, they just like threw a bunch of stuff to fan and see what's going to stick. And hopefully something does, but they'll live in double tight end sets. I kind of alluded to this. I think that there's a pretty good chance they add a receiver before the start of the season. I mean, like, Lockett or Sutton or somebody like that. I mean, some of them, someone that's a name. Brandon Ayuk, maybe requested a trade. That's been thrown out there quite a bit. I don't think that's going to happen. By the way, being a homer, Matt, I don't think you are here putting him in in tier four. I'm fine with that. Uh, You might have been a homer putting the running backs in tier two instead of three, though, yesterday. Oh, I must put him in tier one. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I Uh, I I think that's a one two punch. It lacks star power, but it's good. I see a a pedestrian group on the ground and and I think they play up because they are allowed to to have volume uh, with the running backs. So I think that's true for Najee, but not Warren. Okay. We are on to the NFC North and the Chicago bears, a complimentary group now of wide receivers for Chicago, DJ Moore, Romo Dunze, the rookie. Then you got Keenan Allen, the old crafty veteran uh, to go with Cole Komet and Gerald Everett at tight end. Mercedes Lewis, by the way, as well. Still hanging around. Yep. Yeah. Tier one, those three receivers are studs. Allen was really good last year. Moore was really good last year. I adore Dunze. I'm not big on Komet and Everett, but if that's your fourth and fifth option, that's a good group of receivers. I, I think it's a tier one as well, but also I could see it getting a little bit weird with Roma Dunze just being a rookie. Uh, DJ Moore is not necessarily a, a true one-one stud. And then Keenan Allen, if he ages out, it could be awkward and, and they could play under Maybe. tier one status. But I think you got to put him in, in tier one. Yeah. The way Allen played last year is enough for me to still believe. The Detroit Lions need somebody else to step up uh, at wide receiver yeah, besides Amonra St. Brown, who gets all the targets there. Is that guy, Jameson Williams, in year three of his career after, you know, just uh, not having much of a rookie season because of his ACL that he tore in his final college game? You got Khalif Raymond there as well, Donovan Peoples Jones, 
and of course uh, a budding superstar at tight end in Sam Laporta. Yeah, and I'm going to put him in tier two for those reasons. I mean, the St. Brown Laporta combination is phenomenal, but Jamison Williams has not shown me he can be a two, and I think they might miss a guy like Josh Reynolds. You know, I mean, not great, but I mean, they could use that another fallback option. You know. Love the young wide receiving group in Green Bay. I don't know who's going to lead them in targets and statistically, but uh, could be any number of the top four names that we're going to talk about here. You got Christian Watson. Uh, they think they found the root of some of his hamstring and soft tissue injuries. Uh, everyone loves Dontavian Wicks, the rookie fifth rounder last year. I think he could potentially be the number one for the Green Bay Packers. Jaden Reed out of the slot. Great fit there. So uh, a variable group, a complementary group of wide receivers, and Romeo Dobbs as well as that sort of X wide receiver to go with Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft, second year tight ends with a ton of ability. You can't put them tier one. Uh, I adore the young tight ends, but there's just youth across the table here, and Watson's been up and down. I'm going to put him in tier two, um, firmly, I think, though, and certainly the arrow's pointing up. If there was a bet in Vegas, you know, where it pays off different odds, I might take Wicks to lead the team in receptions. You know, I mean, I assume that would pay more than Reed or Watson. You've kind of convinced me on him. I mean, he is really impressive. Uh, everything points to him being really good. Yeah. And I almost worry, and a lot of people have noticed this, uh, it's not just me, and I get a little bit worried that he's going to be so hyped up that maybe he can't reach it because it's nice when you're a sleeper player mm -hmm. and people project you as a number three or number four, but if everyone starts saying, you know, before your fantasy drafts that this is going to be the new one, you got to draft him, got to draft him, you might get artificially pushed up so high where it's like, oh man, now he's not going to end up on all my fantasy teams. He might not even be in the top two receiver sets. That's the, that's true. Yeah. Right, you know, so we just don't know exactly what they look like there, but I, I would yeah. bet on Wicks. I just think he's good. Me too. Me too. Uh, you know who else is good? Justin Jefferson got he's paid right. the most ever at wide receiver. Then you got another second year player, former first rounder in Jordan Addison. So that could be a nice one, two for uh, Sam Darnold and then potentially JJ McCarthy in 2024. Tight end TJ Hawkinson on the injured list currently. You got Josh Oliver. Uh, in house as well at uh, and and Robert Tanyan at tight end the the Hawkinson injury makes it a little bit more difficult to tear out the the Minnesota Vikings. It keeps about a tier one for me. I mean, I was hard on the Browns running back because of Chubb situation, so I have to count Hawkinson probably not playing until November or something like that. Addison's not my favorite number two out there either. Like of all the like, I always fight about this in like Locked On Dynasty. Like I I think he's okay. I think he's a little bit overrated. Jefferson might be the best receiver in the league, of course. And is there enough targets for him to be, you know, big in fantasy leagues because so much goes to Jefferson? Mm -hmm. And then when Hawkinson's healthy, a lot's going to go there as well. Yeah, like I think Hawkinson's a much better player than Addison. Next, let's talk South and West divisions, team by team, receiver tiers. Comparison is the thief of joy. And it's easy to envy what other people are doing, other people's lives, especially the curated lives that you might see that might not be reality, might look like they have it all together on Instagram or whatever social media platform. But in reality, they probably don't. And therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have. So you can start living your best life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. All you do, you fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched to a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It's so important to have that check-in every week with a therapist and just make sure you're hitting the goals you want to hit in your life. So stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. The Houston Texans are up next in our wide receiver tiers, wide receiver and tight end tiers. And Nico Collins, Tank Dell both broke out with rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud last year. And now they've added Stephon Diggs to the mix. John Mechie, we haven't really seen what he can be as an NFL player either post his uh, health struggles. And then at tight end, Dalton Schultz and Brevin Jordan. It's an interesting group here. It's a, it's a good group. Maybe not tier one, but it's good. I'm going tier one. I think Nico's a top 10 receiver. I think Dell is a top 16 or 17 receiver. 
and Diggs is probably still a top 20. So, you know, if Mechie and Woods are your depth on top of that, or even mm-hmm. Noah Brown or whoever, yep. like pretty good. You know, they can withstand an injury. The tight ends are fine, you know. I'd probably put them two, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to fight you on tier one either. And it's pretty amazing because of what we talked about with CJ Stroud and, and the Houston Texans. Like, ah, new coaching staff, not a very good wide receiver group. I don't know. CJ Stroud might struggle as a rookie. Then, nope. All that was wrong. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But no, not I, Colts. Okay, Colts. Added to their mix with Adonai Mitchell in the second round. Josh Downs, a player I really like, is that slot. And you talk about complimentary players. You got your target hog chain mover in Michael Pittman uh, to go with your young second-year quarterback in Anthony Richardson. Jelani Woods is uh, a really interesting, I think, stock-up player at tight end as well for the Colts. I think Woods and... Downs are vastly underrated right now. And I think Mitchell could be a star. We know the talent's there. I think Pitch Pittman's even an underrated player. I'm still going to put him in tier three, but you could probably convince me for tier two here. So we're going tier three with some helium for the Indianapolis. Yeah, there's Colts. some young guys there. I think it get better and better. Yeah, but you still got you, you got to see it. So you got to be you got yeah. to get achieve the tier before we're going to give it to you. Can't project yeah. too much. You know, yeah. A guy like Jelani Woods, you know. How much do you project for Brian Thomas Jr. first round at wide receiver mm-hmm. for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Gabe Davis they brought in as a free agent, Christian Kirk, a free agent from a couple of years ago as they've really tried to revamp this wide receiver group for multiple seasons in Jacksonville. And tight end, Evan Ingram. I'm also going three. Ingram is a, a weapon, you know, a target earner. I'm a huge Brian Thomas guy. I'm not the big Gabe Davis guy. And I think if Kirk, Kirk is exactly what he is. I mean, he's a B. He's a B minus. He's a good player, you know. Calvin Ridley added to DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks, and Tyler Boyd in Tennessee to try to figure out their wide receiver and pass catching group for their young quarterback in Will Levis. And then Chigo Conquo, who was everybody's uh, darling sleeper tight end last year, didn't quite turn out to be as lucrative for my fantasy leagues as uh, I thought he was going to be Josh Wiley as well at uh, a tight end for Tennessee. I'm also going to go tier three. I mean, they did a lot to improve, but this is a little more volatile than you think. I was a big Chig believer, but what if he never turns into anything? I think Boyd's best days are behind him. Hopkins might be, and Ridley's older than you think, too. Like, you know, their top three receivers, best days could be behind them collectively. Yeah, I, I don't know what to think about Tennessee. Yeah, I just going to put them right in the middle. On to the uh, NFC South now and the Atlanta Falcons with Drake London, Darnell Mooney, Rondale Moore, Casey Washington, the rookie sixth rounder, Ray Ray McLeod, return man, slot receiver, and tight end Kyle Pitts. Going tier two, I'm very much on board with the Drake London. We're going to say the same about Chris Olave here in a minute. Breakout season. I also think Kyle Pitts is better than people think. I mean, there was, I studied this offense so much, and their quarterback play was just hideous the last two years. And Darnell Mooney can play, and Rondo Moore can play. I mean, they could have used those guys last year. You mentioned Olave, so let's go to uh, the, the New Orleans Saints here in the in the NFC South. Chris Olave with A.T. Perry, second-year receiver that I like quite a bit. I think I like yeah, him more than more people. And uh, the speedster, Rashid Shahid as the top three pass catchers. Bub Means, rookie fifth rounder in the mix as well. It's uh, Cedric Wilson Jr. and a tight end, Juwan, jo- uh, uh, Juwan Johnson. I'm a big Shahid and Johnson fan. I know that he's also hurt. Um, I guess we got to put Hill in that mix too. I don't know how many ca- pa- passes he'll catch, but at yeah. least he plays some tight end. Um, I'm going three. I'm going three. I mean, I don't know if there's a solid number two receiver there, but I, I like the threes and fours, you know. I agree. That's a tier three right there with some some potential. Like, yeah, it depends. It kind of depends on what goes on with the offense and, and Derek Carr. When that's why mm-hmm. I kind of side eye that group. I just don't know what to expect from them. Don't know what to expect from the Carolina Panthers either. Here in the NFC South, Deontay Johnson, the newcomer, along with Xavier Leggett. So they're trying to get pass catchers for their young quarterback. Adam Thielen, the old vet of the group. You got Amir Smith Marset, Jonathan Mingo, second rounder from last year, Terrace Marshall, second rounder from a couple years before that, and tight end 
Ian Thomas, Tommy Tremble, and rookie fourth rounder Jatavian Sanders. They're just throwing a lot of bodies and hoping they can work it out for their young quarterback, Bryce Young. Yeah, and I respect it. I mean, I think Deontay Johnson is what they need. He gets open. Uh, they're still tier four for me. I, I want to see Leggett before I jump on board there, and Thielen's age worries me, and plus they have not much at tight end. Well, they've climbed from five to four, so it's something. Yeah, exactly. They could get the three. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, some familiar names there in Tampa with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, Rakeem Jarrett, uh, rookie Jalen McMillan, the third rounder to go with that group, and tight end Cade Otten. I'm going tier three. Uh, I'd, I'd like a little more from the third receiver tight ends, but there are some young talent there, McMillan and Otten, as you mentioned. Evans is still a star. I, 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 don't know, I think Godwin's better than people realize, too. Denver Broncos, after moving on from Jerry Judy, still have Cortland Sutton. Matt's been eyeballing Cortland Sutton as a potential stealer, so we'll see where he ends up. Uh, Josh Reynolds, Marvin Mims, the second rounder from last year, a couple of rookie draft picks, Troy Franklin, the fourth rounder, his quarterback's college teammate, and uh, Devon Vele, a seventh rounder, Tim Patrick in-house as well there for the, uh, for the Denver Broncos. And tight end, Adam Troutman. Greg Dolchich, third rounder from a couple years ago. It's kind of just like a, what the heck is this group of wide receivers? Like, I don't I even know. know who's going to line up where. I mean, Sutton's going to be out there. Reynolds is probably going to be a starter. Is he? I don't know. I think they're four, but you could convince me they're five. I mean, Sutton's not special. He should be a two. Mims and Franklin have some similar skills if one of the two hits. And you mentioned Reynolds. They gave money. I mean, he's an NFL receiver that'll see the field. I kind of like Otten, but I think I mean there are four are all day long, but they could easily fall into a five category. The Kansas City Chiefs traded up in the first round to get the fastest 40-time runner of all time at the combine and Xavier Worthy. They already added speed the offseason with Hollywood Brown, maybe some redundancy there. Uh Rache Rice got himself in the hot water in the offseason. Will he miss games? Uh, for the uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs, not the development they'd hoped from Canarius Tony and Sky Moore, and you got obviously all world tight end Travis Kelsey. I'm going tier two, and much like the Hawkinson conversation, I think you have to factor in some sort of suspension for Rice. But Brown and Worthy are scary. Kelsey's still really good. You know, I, I don't think it's a tier one group, but I think tier two's solid for them. Devontae Adams doing a lot of heavy lifting in Las Vegas. Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker. Uh, you got Michael Gallup in Las Vegas now. And tight end, first rounder, Brock Bowers to go with last year's second rounder, Michael Mayer as the main receiving options there in Las Vegas. Also think tier two. I mean, a lot of young talent at tight end, obviously. I think Adams is still a tier one type receiver, maybe slightly below. Myers is quite good as well. So that, that's uh, that's a great group. I think it's the strength of the team besides Max Crosby. The Chargers have been pillaged at wide receiver, and last year's first rounder has yet to work out for them. Uh, Lad McConkey, high second round pick now uh, to go with Josh Palmer, uh, Brendan Rice, rookie seventh rounder, DJ Chark. Uh, competing there as well for probably one of those starting jobs at wide receiver for the Los Angeles Chargers and tight end Will Disley, Hayden Hurst, Donald Parham. Again, it's one of those groups where there's a lot of names, but I, I don't know what to expect from any of these guys this year, catching passes uh, from Justin Herbert. I expect tier five and without hesitation. Uh, Johnston to me was very un uninspiring. I like McConkey, but I mean, is he going to be the workload, you know, 100 catch guy as a rookie? That seems like a lot. Um, their receivers to be are maybe the worst in the league. Let's finish it up with the NFC West and the Arizona Cardinals. Hope they added a superstar in the first round of the draft. Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Wilson, really nice find for them in round three last year. Zay Jones added to their group. Um, Greg Dortch, the human flame, is uh, an underrated player for the Arizona Cardinals and uh, a budding star tight end in Trey McBride. They even added a third rounder in Tip Ryman. Big old tight end in the draft this year. I might regret not putting them in tier two, but I'm going to start them in tier three. Wilson and McBride kind of broke out, and I like both players a ton. I think Harrison's another superstar, but not a lot of experience between the three of them. Um, trending in the right direction, though, and there's no question. Yeah, some development needed. You know, you don't want to yeah. put them in that tier until you really believe they are there. 
Next up is the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Ayuk has requested a trade, potentially traded by the time you listen to this podcast. I have my doubts that that will happen. Uh, Brandon Ayuk to go with Debo Samuel, Juwan Jennings. You got a rookie first rounder in Ricky Pearsall. Uh, you also have all pro tight end George Kittle. They brought in Logan Thomas as well to back him up. So they got a lot of depth. They got a lot of stars. They got a lot of everything for this tier one receiver group, Matt. Yeah, they're an easy one, um, especially with Pearsall and Jennings. You know, I mean, everyone knows what the guys are on the field all the time. But when you're three and four receivers of those guys, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I mean, star power, depth. They got run after yeah. catch. You got you got the block. You, you got a little bit of everything there. Yeah. Seattle Seahawks, pretty good group as well. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And I think there's going to be a lot more opportunity for last year. First rounder in Jackson Smith and Jigba and those three wide receiver sets in Seattle. In fact, they might even be able to trade away one of those to say Pittsburgh because they got so many receivers. Noah Fant at tight end with a rookie fourth rounder, AJ Borner. Yeah, I'm a huge JSN fan. I think he's going to be one of my favorite breakout candidates. A lot of people think Fant is ready to turn the corner. I think that ship may have sailed. I mean, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's some. I'm not buying that one. That's um, some post, post, post hype sleeper. Yeah, now. exactly. Right. They're tier two. I, I can't put them in tier one. I think Lockett's lost a little bit too. All right. Seattle Seahawks tier two. And now we finish up with the Los Angeles Rams breakout rookie fifth rounder Puka Nakua last year. Cooper Cup, Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell. Sixth rounder, Jordan Whittington. Uh, you got Tyler Higby and a player I really like, a sneaky player, fifth rounder from last year, Davis Allen, and they brought in Colby Parkinson because of Tyler Higby's injury, and, and really Tyler Higby should maybe not even be that much of a part of this conversation with his mm -hmm. injury right now. It's more, more likely Parkinson and Allen, at least to start the year. I think Parkinson and Demarcus Robinson are sneaky contributors as like your third and fourth pass catchers. You know, mm -hmm. we know who the top two are. And I'm sold on Puka, and I'm, I think Cup will come back strong, but I don't know that either is special. So I'm putting them at three. I kind of feel like I should put them at two, but I'm putting them at three. I was about to write them down in two, so you shot me with that one. And uh, this is this is your thing because you're like, okay, um, the Stafford's obviously a really good quarterback, and and the scheme is helping out. Yeah, maybe Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua to play at a at a higher level than maybe they wouldn't in another scheme. Like if we, I know they're different styles and they'd be used differently, but if you took Puka out and put Garrett Wilson in or Olave or London, or, right. you know, yeah. like it Good would point. be even better, you know. There you go. Receiver tiers for 2024. Let us know what you think at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Drop a comment on YouTube. Subscribe while you're there. Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.